G'day everyone, my name is Zach and welcome back to Printed. This week, I'm gonna be showing you five easy tips that you can use at home to take your paint jobs to the next level. I'm going to be using last week's model to demonstrate how you can take it from a very basic paint job and with a couple of nice and easy steps, move it up into a better, more high quality looking miniature. So without further ado, let's jump into it. The first technique that I'm gonna be showing you today is how to shade miniatures. Now, this is more or less a super, super simple technique that basically everyone should know and is more or less something that you've most likely heard about before. For this model, I'm gonna be using a bit of Drakenoff Nightshade because unfortunately I have run out of the ever wonderful Nuln Oil and Agrax Earth Shade. So I've decided to use this to shade down our fur today. When applying washes, you wanna make sure that you're consistently moving them over the surface and making sure that they don't pull on any of your recesses or areas at the bottom of the model. An easy mistake that can often happen is when you put a bunch of the wash on the model and without realizing, it starts pooling down at the bottom. Obviously, gravity is going to pull it down to the bottom of the model. So we just wanna make sure that if anything is pooling down the bottom or in areas that we don't want it, you can just wick it up with your paintbrush and move it away or wipe it off on a paper towel. Dry brushing is a technique that you can use to take your models to a next level very quickly and very easily. And ironically enough, you don't actually want your brush to be dry for this. For this model, I'm just gonna be using a nice round makeup brush. This is a really thick bristled one that I found at, I think it was Big W, but you can find them at a bunch of different cheap stores. Now, using my wet palette, I'm actually gonna put a little bit of Mornfang Brown on there and then more or less take off everything on the paintbrush until it's ever so slightly, just a little bit left. You wanna make sure that when doing this that your paintbrush is slightly damp. You can either keep a sponge with a couple drops of water in it or you can use a paper towel and just wick the majority of the water off. Now when we're dry brushing, you wanna make sure that we're dragging down from the model. Since the highlights will be at the top, we wanna to make sure that we're reserving that shadow detail down the bottom. And you can always build this up ever so slightly, so it's better to start off light with your coats and then improve it over time, then go super heavy and then have it blown out. Another super simple technique that you can use to make your models pop is layering. Layering more or less involves taking a slightly brighter paint than your previous layer and highlighting up the areas towards the top of the sun. Now, when you're using layers, you wanna make sure that you have a nice consistent flowing paint. I more or less go for a roughly two parts paint to one part water or enough so that it covers the model and isn't pooling anywhere. As you can see here, basically what I'm doing, similar to what we did in our last video, is we're starting in the area where we want it to be darkest and then we're moving that pigment up to the brightest parts here. Doing so creates a natural gradient. It makes it a little bit smoother so that we're not having to worry about glazing or doing more advanced techniques that take a lot more time. For things like this, I'd specifically focus on areas that are pointing up on the sun. Ideally, when it comes to layering, we wanna try and keep this towards the upper parts of the mold. So on all of these panels, I'm just gonna focus on roughly the top 10 to 20% of it to really make them pop and draw your eye to it. You can also do a slightly different technique where instead of just moving the paintbrush gently over the surface, you can stipple it on. This creates a slightly more sketchy looking highlight and can also help create a, a bit more of a smoother gradient over the entire model. For our next technique, we're gonna be focusing on edge highlighting. When doing this, you wanna make sure that you're using a color that is much brighter than the one that you're currently using. For this, I've chosen to use an orange color, but if you're highlighting something like blue, you can use either a white or a very light blue, or if it's a red, you can use something like orange. Now, when doing this, we wanna make sure that our paint isn't too watery, as this will start flowing over the entire surface. And when doing it, the biggest tip that I can give for you when you wanna do edge highlighting is holding your model in the correct way. You more or less wanna be coming at the edge at roughly a 45 degree angle and trying to use the tip of your brush. If you attempt to use the base, um, it can overflow and you can get a much, much thicker edge highlight. Whereas here, I wanna go for a nice thin one. So as you can see, I'm just focusing on all those nice sharp edges. And if you make a mistake, you can always wick it up with either a paintbrush or just use your finger to wipe away anything that you don't wanna be there. This helps make the model pop by drawing your eye to the edges and just kind of defining the panels a little bit more so that from a distance, you can see them much more clearly. For our final step here, we're gonna be doing a slightly more advanced technique called glazing. 
Glazing is essentially like a layer, but instead of using a more thicker paint, we're going to be watering it down to just above or under a wash. Now, this separates all the pigment out and it allows us to glaze it into the shadows. So essentially what we're doing is I'm going to be focusing on the bottom couple of panels and areas that I want to be that different color. For this red, a good choice of color is purple. It adds a bit of visual interest and helps deepen the shadows. Similar to what we do with the layers, we want to drag the pigment down to where we want it to be the darkest. So using this color, coming in a second time here, I'm just going to start at the top and then drag that. As we drag this to the bottom where we want our shadow to be, you can kind of tell that there is a little bit more pigment than at the top there. This helps create a nice smooth gradient and just makes those shadows pop and add, adds a little bit of visual interest to the model so that it looks like we've done a lot more work than we actually have. Now glazes are a very, very slow and tedious process. So you most likely want to save this for things like when you're painting characters. Thank you to everyone for watching this far in the video. I hope you guys have learned something new today and I would love to do a couple more technique focused videos so that I can share my thoughts and sort of techniques that I use to make my models pop and little little tips and things that I've learned over the 10 to 14 years that I've been painting. So if you want to see another video like this, make sure to leave a like on it. And if you are new here, you can show your support by subscribing to the channel. We are getting so close to a few of the milestones uh, for YouTube and I'm very excited to hopefully join the partner program soon. So a big welcome to everyone who has joined the community in the past week. And my apologies again for this video being late. Hopefully next week's is on time. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.